Uh, so what I'd like to work on is I'm going to cut a bob first and then I'm going to layer this bob. Um, so it kind of just falls into layering while protecting an outline. Uh, so establishing the length first and then coming through and layering the interior. Um, so my outline, what I want to do is I want to actually cut a, line, a length and a line that is kind of parallel to the ground. Uh, I know that we call that uh, a lot in terminology square, um, but to me a square has four corners. It's an actual shape. Um, so really what I'm looking for is a line that doesn't descend towards the front and it doesn't descend towards the back. It's just going to be level all the way through. If I'm cutting a mannequin, so it's going to be super easy. I can just follow this particular place right here. And what that does for me is it keeps it right where the shoulder would be. So I'm keeping it kind of the longest of the, that a one length bob could be. But obviously after I've cut the one length, I'm then going to come through and layer it. So I have to decide what kind of balance of layers do I want within the haircut? Um, what kind of shape do I want? Do I want it to be layered everywhere? Do I want it to be layered more in the back and heavier in the front? Do I want it to be laid more in the front, heavier in the back? Do I want it to be consistent all the way throughout? Uh, so I'll think about that. And that obviously you want to think about that with your client as well, obviously density and all that kind of stuff. Now generally what tends to happen nowadays is we have a lot of weakness in this area anyway, either from previous haircuts, um, heating appliances used in hair, chemical work, you know, the, all that stuff that your clients do at home uh, when they're not with you, uh, that damages their hair. So we're already kind of dealing with hair that's finer in this area anyway. So the particular layering I want to do is I want my layers to get heavier towards the front. So I want to protect this area. And thinking, obviously, that the hairline is much higher anyway in the front, so we're already dealing with less density. So this is already weaker and softer as it falls and more transparent than anything that's going to fall in the back. So I'm going to want to remove a little bit more weight off here and leave it there. Essentially what I'm looking for here is a real beveled bob. So not graduated, but more of a layer. So I'm, I'm literally going to pull everything down. If I pull everything down, that's going to make the top the longest, right? So basically what I will do is I'll take some of that top off and I will overdo it backwards and it will get heavier towards the front. But before we do that, let's do the length. Let's talk about the bob. So I like to do um, a lot of my bob work starting from the front. And this is from my years of working at Vidal Sassoon. Um, we're obviously trained very classically, so we start from the back and work towards the front. And then we start to play around with all the different intricacies of haircutting and we experiment with things and we figure out some things might be slightly easier. We figure out how to do certain shapes backwards and things like that. So we understand the flow of um, the control of cutting hair. And what I like about starting in the front is there's less hair in the front to begin with, right? So this is the weakest spot. It's not only the weakest spot because of the density, but it's also got the ear. And the ear, obviously on a mannequin, it's molded in, but it sticks out on humans and we've got different kind of ears, right? Some are bigger than others and some stick out more than others, right? Some so, ears are bigger than others. Some mothers. <laughs> um, so we have to deal with that. So the thing is, if I start in the back and I work through to the front, I always have that tendency to make a mistake at the very last part of the haircut. And that's because of the ear. So the mindset is to start where the ear is. And that's the weakest, most jumpy area in the haircut because of the ear. So if I start there, I don't have an ear in front of it and I don't have an ear behind it. So it's not gonna jump on me. But if I start in the back, there's always that ear at the end, right? There's always that hurdle at the end of the sprint, right? And I don't wanna fall over that hurdle. So I'm gonna eliminate that possibility by just starting through the front. Now, usually what you probably see me do is take a curved diagonal back section from apex to occipital and it gives you that circular section in the crown and the reasoning for that is what it does is it leaves me enough weight to fall over the ear but as you know I like to make things even easier and more simple for you guys uh, so that when you're behind the chair 
you work a little bit more efficiently with time uh, without losing the integrity of the technique that you're trying to create. So I'm actually going to take this full panel through the side here. I've sectioned off right behind the ear and then I've split the back into two, a little bit higher than the hairline. All right. We're dealing with a finer density of hair on this mannequin. I work with this mannequin quite often, so I know exactly how it reacts. So what I've got here is I've got quite a lot of hair falling over the ear. This is a realistic situation, right? That's what the bob's going to be worn afterwards, right? When I come through from the back, working through to the front, we take sections. So as we work through to the front from the back, we have this section coming through over the ear, and it's such a small section. Even with the next one, it's such a small amount of hair falling over the ear. That's not how the hair is going to fall over the ear every day. It's going to have all of that weight falling over it. So I'm really asking to make mistakes if I do it this way. Is it possible? Of course it's possible with time and efficiency on, on, on the technique. Uh, but sometimes we don't have that time, plus we don't have uh, the patience level. Our anxiety doesn't allow for it, you know what I mean? We're not all the same. Some people are Jedis, some people aren't. You know what I mean? Some people have that patience, some people don't. So I'm combing the hair down, natural fall, through here over the ear, but you can see I've pulled this back and around here. Whenever somebody wears their hair, they don't necessarily wear it like so. And if I cut a line that follows that level all the way around, I'm actually gonna cut this shorter than what this is because it's not going to live here afterwards. It's actually going to live over here behind the cheekbone. So technically this, I need to keep longer than what this is because it's going to travel over here. So I keep it behind the cheekbone. Again, this is just working with how it naturally falls. This haircut has to look good when you're not there. So I'm doing everything that we would be doing every single day. It's either going to be tucked behind the ear or behind the cheekbone. Only time we're going to wear it on the face is if we've got bangs or fringe. So I comb it into place. I've got to hike up the jeans here. <laughs> get the lunge in. Get, the, the get a full, the yeah. Full squat. <laughs> yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to not comb from roots to ends anymore. I've already got the hair in place. So I don't need to keep raking through and altering how that hair falls. Just get it to do its thing because that's what it's going to do. Now I'm going to go below the ear so that I don't put any more pressure and pull and tension on that area there. And I pull that down to where I want it. I tap above the ear and all the way through. And then I cut my line. I'm using really nice sharp scissors today. These are courtesy of Hairbrain, the HP Pro AG55s. Thank you, Gerard. So when I let go, I have the bob. It's got to look good when I'm not there. So now that I've done that, I'm now going to duplicate that on the other side, right? I'm not going to continue all the way around because what happens when we continue, we either get shorter or we have that tendency to get longer, right? Getting longer is not the problem. Getting shorter is going to be the problem. So again, combing that into position behind that cheekbone. And now coming in and putting my length in. Tapping above the ear, da 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 da. I would be using the mirror in this situation to make sure I've got the same length. I'm cutting on a mannequin, so I'm using the neckline as a kind of a, a visual. Make sure she's level. Yeah. <laughs> set up, girl. Set up. I'm a little bit longer on this side. So I'll just have another look through. Again, keep that hair behind the cheekbone. Remember, you're building the house now. You can decorate it all afterwards. Once it's dried and ironed or whatever you're going to do with it. So I can check off anything extra afterwards if I don't like it. So now that's done, now I can move into the back. The front's done, 
And now it's like connecting dots. So fast. So easy. Yeah. Get it done. It's kind of like, what do you want to waste your time on? Right? So you've got this, you've got this period of time to do your client, to do the haircut. So you've got to figure out where do you want to spend most of your time. Do you want to spend most of the time on the outline? And it getting shorter and shorter and shorter each time you cut it? Or do you just want to get that in there and concentrate on the layering, which is probably the more dominant part of the haircut? And then obviously the finishing part. Mm. And then taking your client over to buy product or whatever it is that you're going to increase your revenue. So it's all about working smart and hard. Yeah. Thank you for the badges. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's really nice of you. So the key thing also here is to use plenty of this. Mm. Plenty of water. Obviously not too much that we're soaking your clients through. But enough that the hair, the water will now come through the hair and gravity will just pull it down. That's what we're looking for. Water adds the element of weight. So gravity will just help you push that or pull that, excuse me, into natural fall. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just working natural fall here. Thank you, Karen, for the badge. So I've let the hair fall. And if you look at it, I'm just letting it do its thing. Mm -hmm. So for a visual, it should look like water coming down a waterfall, literally, straight down. So now that that's there, I can come through, use my guide from the back, there it is, tap, 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 and continue my line all the way through. Now, what do we do about the tilting the head forward scenario so that we bevel the edge? Well, I'm not going to bevel the edge by tilting the head forward. I'm going to keep my edge nice and solid. I'll bevel the edge afterwards when I layer it. So I'm not pushing the head forward so that I get that little graduated edge to this. I want a pure one length here to begin with. I want to keep the roots and the ends the same thickness. If I push it against the head shape, if I tilt the head forward, I'm then going to bevel that edge. So I'm not after that. If I want to do any of that, I could tilt the head forward after it's blow dried and just nibble all of that excess off that I don't want. So now guys, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing this and I can see that. So it's all about connecting, connecting the, dots. the dots. All right. So I can continue to move this way if I want, or I can move backwards from that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work from this. Someone just asked, why do you tap? If I tap, it releases tension. As soon as you touch the hair, you're putting pressure on it and you're making it fake. That's not what it does normally. So it's pulling the hair. As soon as I let go, it springs back to do what it wants to do. So if I do this, I need to tap to release any of that excess tension. The comb is there to just hold the hair from swinging back and forth. That's all you're using it for. And you're using it as a ruler to put the line in. So really, if I'm going to come through and I'm going to drag all the way through, I'm pulling the hair. That's why you're not seeing me do this. Because the line is only clean in my fingers and I'm not prepared to walk around with my client all day holding that haircut in my hands. It's got to look good without you involved. So we'll continue to work backwards. Working down, tap, tap, tap release excess tension. Again, I'm not pushing the head against the scalp. You know, it's not gonna walk around like that, so I'm not gonna cut it like that. And then I'll meet, meet this other piece right here. All right, so that's my perimeter done. And now I'll just take this last section. Now, obviously I'm determined how many sections are in the back based on the density of the hair that I'm working on. So if I'm working on a lot more hair, then I'm taking a few more sections, but I'm not taking as many as I would if I was to work my classic variation and work from back to front. Each section is an invitation to make a mistake. Think of it like that, all right?
So coming in with the water. And now I'm dealing with a completely different part of the hair. I'm dealing with hair that lives on the horizontal part of the head shape. It's different to the hair that lives on the vertical. It's just hanging off the head. Now it's actually living on the head and then hanging off the head. So I've really got to look at where this wants to live. What I don't want to do is cut this in an artificial place. So as you can see, I'm coming through and making sure that strands of hair are going down not sideways or diagonally. Really getting that grain to exactly. fall into place. So, you know, when you look down on this, you're going to see it's just like that standard layer section in. Dun, 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 dun. Pivot, 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 pivot. That's how the hair falls. So that's why it's sectioned that way, that haircut, you know? So I'm allowing that hair to do its thing. I'll add a little bit more water to add some weight to the situation. Obviously it makes that hair stick together. It makes the hair darker. So that guideline becomes bolder. And it adds consistency too, right? Mm -hmm. That way you're having the same amount of hydration throughout the whole haircut. Yeah, the elasticity is not changing on you. So right. you're not gonna have any surprises at the end. There might be some surprises. It's a haircut. Right. Yeah, is, but right. You're not gonna have tumps. So as you can see, I'm not working on a straight texture of hair here. It's quite a wavy, so I can see that wave in there. So it, again, if I come through and just comb through all of that, I'm not allowing for her natural texture. We're literally making her blow dry her hair straight every time to show off this bob. Well, that's not how people want to do their hair nowadays. We want to work with a natural texture. So this is purely working with the wave. If, I was, if she was gonna blow dry this straight all the time, then I would be working it that particular way. Tap, 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 tap. So again, I'm just letting it do its thing. So I have my bob consistent all the way through. Like a laser. <laughs> this is the uh, hair art. This mannequin is from Hera. Yeah. yeah. We uh, use a few different mannequins here at Knowledge Destroys Fear. We have the, the uh, Mia, which is this from Hera. Um, I also use Clarice from Exalto. Clarice. And then um, Viola from Pivot Point. Those are my favorite mannequin companies. If you are a Pivot Point user, you can use my code. I have a discount code. I'll put it in the chat here. Yeah, it's KDFED. Well, I think it's like 20% off. Ooh. So if you want one of these amazing uh, tripods, that's uh, quite a good deal. I think they're like 200 plus dollars these tripods so you get a chunk of change off of that so you see i'm just kind of working that edge gently right it's a wavier texture of hair so i'm having to be a bit more careful with it can't really use so much tension see if her hair was straight i'd be able to just go boom, 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 boom. right but i need to control this or really curly right for sure for curly totally visual, freehand kind of situation. If you use your hands, you use intention. Mm -hmm. So it's going to Whew. back at you. So, yeah. So there's the bob. Quite easy, simple way of doing it, working from front to back. Now, that whole like moving the head around and checking all the angles, do it all you like, but I would do that more at the end. You know, we see this all the time and we're checking it in and all that and sideways and all these angles and stuff. That's something I would do afterwards. Mm -hmm. But realistically, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the haircut to be balanced with the head up. Right? I'm not concerned too much with that view. You know what I mean? I'm not really seeing people walk down the street like this. I see them more like this, this. So I'm looking at those natural angles, not those really severe ones. Look, these ones, 
<laughs> old ones, you know. So, but again, different strokes for different folks. However, you feel you want to do it, that's how you're going to do it. That's what makes us all uniquely different. So now I want to layer this. So it's all about setting the hair color. So I want it to be lighter in the back, heavier in the front. Realistically, all I'm looking to do now is I'm looking to take this edge and bevel it. So if I, if I do this right, I can bevel that edge, all right? Or if I do it wrong, I can make it flick too much. So the key is, is to understand how much weight to remove to bevel that edge. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get rid of the top, I don't need the top. Think of this like pure architecture, like you're building a, a, a structure, a house. You start with the floor, then you put the walls, then you do the ceiling. So that's how I'm gonna start this haircut. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is just section away the top, horseshoe section. through the crown, along that parietal. So literally I'm sectioning off the horizontal part of the head shape. Someone's asked a couple of times where we got the spray bottle. I think it's just a it's misting hair bottle. Brain. Yeah, hair brain. Hair brain. You can find pretty much everything I have. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, those hairsprays are pretty standard. You know yeah, I mean? that's, I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you could probably, I've, I've seen them at Cosmo Prof and Salon Centric, and yeah, I think they're just them. like misters. Yeah, originally they were plant misters for misting plants. Oh. And then now the then makeup artists started using them, and then they came into the hair industry, like most things make their way into. We like to make everything a hair tool, huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Or a hair product. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you for the badge. Thank you so much. Really nice of you. All right, sectioned off the parietal ridge both sides from the um, crown. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So just isolating the roof, that's all. Don't need that yet. We'll put the roof on the house afterwards. So now it's all about taking the right amount of weight out of here to protect this all the way through. Because if I layer it too much, then this becomes too transparent, flicky, and goes that way, right? So it's the kind of layer that I create too. So I'm just going to section down the center back. And we'll work one side at a time. Thanks, Chris Benson, for the badge. Yeah. <laughs> now I owe him some. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll talk about that too. We're off to um, Anaheim in early April. I think it's right at the beginning of April. We're doing the uh, premiere show. It used to be Long Beach, right? Mm -hmm. The ISSC is now part of the premiere. Um, so what we're doing is uh, we'll be there teaching our KDF hands-on class. We'll be doing um, some look and learn as well while we're there. And also gonna be uh, on main stage with Christopher Benson and a few friends of mine. Uh, so come see us if you're at the show. Also going to be doing uh, hair brain teaching at the Anaheim show. So plenty of stuff going on. Uh, my BFF Ira is going to be there too. He's got his own stuff going on. So we'll be, both be there. So come by and see us. And obviously I'll be there with the team. So yeah. Um, so vertical section right down the center of this side. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now what's going on here. So if we look through this, we've got all these different lengths to choose from. And as you can see, when I comb that down, 
Look at our outline. Look at the density right there. That's the thickness, that's what one length does. It keeps this the same as that. It's not the same in length, it falls to the same length. So realistically, the thickness is the same all the way through. So what I want to do is I want to remove a little bit of this so that it forces this to bevel in. So really what you're doing is you're going to take off part of this corner. That is that piece that falls down there, right? But how much of that do I take? So what we have to think about is, where's the hairline in the front? I'll do it on here. Okay. It's all the way up here. Right there. So I only have from there to there of density for this outline through the front. So if I'm not careful, if I layer too low, I might lose some of the integrity of that, regardless of how much I over direct. So what I want to do is I want to use that point back here or higher. So literally your hairline is level with your occipital ridge. Right? So this is the extra bonus stuff that we have on our head. Right? This is the odd man out. That's why it makes things difficult when it comes to outlines. So what I want to do is I want to layer from where that hairline is, which is the occipital ridge, I want to layer from there or higher. So that's going to be my guide to create these layers now. There's the occipital ridge. So I'm gonna let a little bit more drop away. I just wanna bevel the edge. I don't want to like layer this so it starts flicking everywhere. So I'm really gonna use a minimal flat layer right there. I'm not following the head shape, just cutting it nice and flat. Let's have a look, see what happens. So it beveled it, right? But not, as not, not enough. So, I'm going to take a little bit more out. Leave it heavier, you can always cut more hair off. Right, so that's where I laid before. Now I'm going to go a little bit lower. But never lower than the occipital ridge. Now I look at that. Beveled. So I'm in control of what I'm doing here. So now we've got a bevel right there. Next section. Now I have to think about how heavy do I want it to get towards the front. So how does that weight line drop towards the front? Because there's a weight line. It doesn't have to be graduation to just have weight lines. It can be layers as well. There's a top. There's an end to the hair. So that's why we see those weight lines. I'm going to bring the hair straight back. I'm not going to send it to the middle. I'm going to send my section straight back to this imaginary wall behind the mannequin. So everything, just like a drawer, can be pulled back. I'm sending it to that back wall. And I'm cutting this. So I use my previous as the guide. I don't push it into it though. I send them that way. There it is. So I'm just taking that little corner off that back edge. Now, by pulling back, it's going to start to get heavier. Remember, I just pulled everything down. It got heavier towards the top, didn't it? So all I'm doing is I'm doing a bob back here now. This is the floor. And I'm just gonna send everything that reaches down to it, or back to it. Taking my previous section, and sending those two back. And there's the guy. I'm gonna drop her down a little bit for more comfort. Don't wanna to be too high up, because then this starts to ache a little bit, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. I wanna kinda of keep my elbow definitely below my shoulder. So sending straight back, guys, as you can see. And look. I'm running out of hair. I've only got that little bit right there. So 
Send these sides back. Nothing reaches. So what that's done is that's layered it while maintaining the strength of that outline mm -hmm. all the way through. But it's giving me that little bevel on the edge. So there's not much layering through the sides at all. Yet. I've not done the top. So the, the, the thing right now is to layer it and protect the outline. So realistically, once I've done this side, I can do anything I want with the top because I've protected my outline. But I want it to connect. I don't want to disconnect it. Take my guide from this side. Right down the middle. And these will be the same. I'll use the previous side as the guide and I'll send them straight back. I'm going to comb the side of the section that I'm about to cut. So my guide is this side, the hair I'm cutting is there. If I comb this side, I have that tendency to push the guide into the hair I'm going to cut, and then it will become shorter. All right? That's a quick way to lose the side of your hair cut. So I want it to remain even, so I'm gonna do the same thing as the other side. I'm gonna comb to and with the guide. Straight back. Previous section. There it is. So what you're seeing is you're seeing all everything below that point drop away, right? And the, with that being the guide, look what I'm creating. So by cutting that cord, that length off at the top, that corner, I create another one. Right there, right through the O-bone, the occipital ridge. That corner, my friends, is the strength of my outline. So the higher you get the guide, the stronger your outline is. The lower you get your guide, the weaker the outline becomes. So again, being in control of what you're doing, understanding what's going to happen when you do something. Don't want any surprises. I think for me, it took a while to, um, you know, corners were always, you know, cut off that corner, get rid of that corner, lighten up that corner, but actually, what we're doing is creating the corners with control. Exactly, we, we're utilizing the effect of the corner, which is to have weight. It's a peak of weight. Doesn't reach. So, just like the classic graduate above, you have graduation and then it comes through to a point of one length. And that's what we've just done with the layers. This is actually one of the most classic haircuts there is. So chic, I think. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a beveled, sleek bob when it's done like this. But obviously it's wavy, so we can make it look like the lob very mm -hmm. easy and have that expansion. But when you smooth that lob out, it's actually a beveled bob. So now that that's done, I'll just have a little peek on the inside. Regina. Right, so that's me bringing that straight back to the wall, and I've achieved the wall. So, now that that's been done, I can now start to work through the top. So the, the idea here is to join this in. If I wanted to take it shorter, I could. It's not going to affect this. It's going to affect what it looks like on top. We like Kelly's hair right now, which you can't <laughs> quite see, right? A bit like a pop top kind of situation, right? But we want this to fall in and, and just tie into all of this into the bevel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take what we think is horizontal, but technically now, if you come over here, it's vertical sections all the way through the top, and we're gonna to pull back onto what we've just done. So if I pull up, then I'm gonna make it lighter. I'm gonna layer more. 
So I'm actually just going to take that section I, the top where I just cross-checked, and I'm going to use that as the guide. I'm going to pull this back onto what we've got. So let me drop it down here. There was a couple of questions asking why you, when you uh, sectioned your horseshoe yeah. section, was it angled um, down? So think of the weight in the haircut, right? My weight line is up here with the layers, and because I pull back, it gets heavier towards the front. That's known as a triangular shape. So it looks like this. You pull the hair straight out from the head, that's what you're gonna see. I pulled it back, but that's what it creates, right? So that's what I wanna go with. I wanna go with the flow of the weight of the haircut. So that's why I section my horseshoe diagonal forward to work with the flow of the haircut. Diagonal sections help you push that weight that way. They cut through something, so it gets done much quicker. So. Okay. <laughs> Light. So pulling that straight back onto that underneath hair. And there's the guide. And I'll do that all the way through. So you see, it. if it does its thing, mm -hmm. you're allowing the texture to do its thing, but it's precise. Or we can bevel it under. Same thing, everything is going to come back onto that first section. So I'm joining the top onto the underneath. Everything back. So a lot of people tend to call this square, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pulling it back square. And I think it's just because of this line, people think square. A square has four corners, right? So when I let this fall now, it's shorter here, longer there. That's triangular, my friends. It's shorter on the inside, gets longer towards the front. Square would be this being flat, and then this being flat, and there'd be a corner right there when it falls, not when I pull it back. So everything coming back onto that underneath. So again, I'm creating a triangular shape in the haircut. Call it, pulling the hair back to the wall behind. See now this hair is shorter than anything else moving forward. So when I cross check, I can see that it's shorter at the back, getting heavier towards the front. One million hearts. <laughs> Yay! So now let's do the other side, exactly the same process. Or process for some of you Americans. Yeah. <laughs> process. <laughs> process. Data. <laughs> Same thing. I think that's one of the things we were identifying in class too, is everybody's so different, you know? All these people commenting, it's called this, it's called that. Mm. It's called wherever you want to call it, because guess what? Not everybody's in America. Mm -hmm. I think that's something we forget when we go online, that we, we just think that we're here in the States. It's actually a global thing, that internet thing, you know? So you've got people from like me who call this area of the fringe, not bangs, you know. Uh, you've got people in Germany that call it the pony, right? They don't call it bangs. Then you've got like the shag haircut. We don't call it the shag in the UK. If you guys have watched Austin Powers, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's not haircutting. In Brazil, they call the shag the pantera. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's all these different names for things nowadays, guys. So it's like, just embrace it. Especially some of those older hair cutters, hairdressers. Don't want to get stuck in like that old time of like, oh, it's this, it's always that. Mm -hmm. Just embrace the change, guys. It's about the shape, right? It is, it's all about the shape. What's going on inside it. It's such a visual, you know, uh, craft that we have that you could put a name to it, but really it's all about the reference photo that someone is giving you. Yeah. So being able to and, recognize and, that. And it's whatever they call it, right? Yeah.
got a little bit of a jump there. Do you see it? So it means I've missed that in the crown. So I'm going to come back through. So what it means is I started too high. So as you cross check through, don't just chop things off. Go back through the initial way because there's a reason why you're doing it that way. Mm -hmm. If I come through this way, I'm not going to remove as much weight as if I go the other way. So let's have a peek. Let's find that spot. You're going on a treasure hunt. Yeah, it's there. I saw it. See it? Wow, there it is. Boom. How dare you. Get out of here. So we've got a few classes coming up. I just took my uh, latest and the first class of the year here in uh, San Diego. We just did a two day Knowledge Destroyer Sphere classic course. Um, I have another one coming up in March, which is sold out. My next available class with me here in San Diego is gonna be Knowledge Destroyer Sphere Creative. So salon work that's done on a more creative level. Um, Maybe you're bored of doing things the same way all the time. Um, it's just one of those classes where we can approach things in a different manner. Uh, so salon creative in that, it doesn't mean, hey, I've been cutting it for 10 years and I'm creative. It's got nothing to do with that. It's the approach that we're going to take to the haircuts. So it's really got nothing to do with your experience level or anything like that. Um, that's in June, at the end of June. Um, we've also got a class with Kelly. Yours is coming up on the 21st of May. Mm -hmm, May 21st, razor class. Razor haircutting. And, you know, if you've ever taken a class with me, it's literally the same thing, but with a razor. So it's just jam-packed with information and haircutting, working on loads of different shapes and techniques and, and mechanics so that you can take and utilize every single day in your salon work. Um, it's just like my classes, it's 100% hands-on. Uh, so a full day of hair, and that's May 21st. Any of the classes you want to sign up for, you can sign up for them uh, by following the link tree link in my bio. And we only take uh, 10 students per class. So right now we're, we've got like four or five places left in my creative class, and uh, you've got seven in yours. Okay, seven. Yeah. Come on down. So once that's done, I'm happy with that. We also have our Knowledge Destroy Sphere um, education page. Yes, Instagram. We have a private page. Um, that's generally where we do our lives, like you're seeing. Um, we do them uh, as weekly as we can, uh, definitely two or three a month. Mm. Um, but I also, now what we do is we stream my class. So when I'm teaching, we stream elements of it onto my private page. So if you can't make a hands-on class in the flesh, you can also watch my hands-on classes on my private page. And that's where I also house all of my video education. Uh, so it's another Instagram page. It's called Knowledge Destroys Fear. Very original. And um, it's where everything is. Literally all the videos that we do. So there's my nice, that's heavy, great. bob, layered bob shape. I haven't layered it too much, so that it's, it's like doing that kind of divot thing where it flips out. You know, I'm not looking for that friends kind of look to it yet, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I think really what, what it needs now, it needs some sort of fringe action. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pass this on to Kelly. She's now going to come through and bottleneck this bob for you by putting some fringe or bangs or pony work on it. All yeah. Right. All right, we'll switch it. Let me Get your it. stuff. Can I do a please, please do a quick recap? Yeah, sure. So what we've got is we've got a bob. So I've established my bob first. And then what I've done is I've come through and I've layered it. We've done a, a layer from the back. So we've used the occipital ridge as our guide and layered through. And we've over-directed backwards so that we make this the heaviest point. So I've just got a really clean, classic layered bob going on here. Uh, essentially what a clean, classic layered bob is, it just makes it beveled. So you can see I've beveled the edge. So 
Okay. Can I your clips? I didn't grab. Oh, I've got loads of them. You just help yourself. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. There's Kelly's hair, guys. <laughs> Floppy today. What's up, Giza? All right, so we're going to add some fringe in here. Now, um, I got really inspired watching DJ um, in his class talk about fringe and face framing. And um, I, I do a lot of shag haircuts and a lot of bang trims or bang installs and... Um, what I wanted to talk about today was how do we find where a fringe should start? How wide of a fringe should we create? Um, you know, going in to tackle it, especially if there's difficult hairlines or texture, curly bangs, all of those types of things. So when I'm, you know, approaching a client who wants to have a fringe, um, first we need a reference photo. What are you comfortable with? What are you looking for? Are you looking for just bangs? Or are you looking for bangs with some pieces to fall down? So if you clipped your hair back, do you want some pieces to fall over or do you want that to be kind of harsh and not so much? Um, what I wanna go for here is a really nice curtain fringe with the, with, the, um, with the razor. But because DJ did such a nice bob, I don't wanna layer it too much on the side here. I just want this to kind of be focused as a fringe and then we still keep this heavy weight line. So I'm not going to be bringing this in too much to cut that off because we want to maintain that length and that weight that DJ just built here. So what I did is I resaturated the hair and I'm combing this forward because the, this fringe is going to live forward on your forehead. So as I'm combing this all the way down, kind of similar to how we were combing this in the back and letting that natural hair fall where it wants to fall, I'm looking at where the round of the head starts this way, where that starts to dip down. So this part of the head is going to kind of be like that part of the head, right? That's all the same. Yep. So also thinking about the hairline and how this hair falls, where is this hair wanting to sit off the face, right? So all of this hair, as I'm just moving this around, this is wanting to sit back and off the face. This is really key, guys. This is the same thing that you're going to take into consideration if this was face framing. It's it, yeah. Because that's your length. That's your length right there. You don't want to cut that, do you? Because mm -mm. it's gone. Yeah, and we don't want to layer it, right? Because then there's that corner that we just built, all of that weight down here. So this is going to be brushed aside. And also, same idea is I'm not going in and raking these roots too much. I resaturated and then just kind of let the hair clump together, telling me where it wants to live, as opposed to forcing something into it. This is absolute key, guys. If you force a fringe or bangs, it's not going to be your best friend ever. Your client's not going to love it. No, they're going to... Uh, then, then you get the stories of, I tried a bang once and I hated it when I, you know. Uh -huh. So kind of slowly getting into it and then taking your time to really visualize and see, to move the hair around and see what's living off the face and what's living on the face just as it's falling on its own. So this is off the face here. Now, as it works with any sort of hair pattern, growth pattern, especially on humans, one side's gonna be different. It's not gonna be symmetrical as you're part sectioning this away. Right, so that kind of ends up usually being in this triangle section. Yep. From the, the round and of the head coming forward into like the high temple or the recession area. Right, and right? if you look at this, guys, it's not symmetrically perfect. Why? because that's not how it works. It's, you're, you're identifying what falls where. So some places it might be different than this side, all right? I think we, we get too caught up on that with the precision haircutting. We have to make all our sections absolutely evenly perfect. Totally. But we're not dealing with a decoration of sectioning. We're dealing with what falls afterwards when we're not there, aren't we? With what's, we're not really focusing on that, that ba or that symmetry at the roots. We're looking it, for all down over here. balance over where we're going to cut the hair. Yeah, essential that, guys. So the, now the next step into sectioning off where we want to find the fringe and where we want this to sit on our client so that it looks nice and they don't have to do anything to it, is now there's a section that's gonna live on the forehead, and then there's gonna be kind of this transitional piece. Mm -hmm. The one that really wants to swing either this way or push the hair this way. So as this is drying, I'm not even touching it much, I can see what wants to live right on the forehead, 
which is here, right? These are all clumping together and hanging out at a party. And then these would be the swinging transitional areas, right? Mm -hmm. So within these three sections, we have a lot of decisions to make. Do we want it to arch downwards? Do we want it to go straight across or do we want it to arch up? The smile. The smile, yeah. right? Um, I'm going to go with a really popular M fringe where we're going to go shorter to longer, shorter to longer. And that's going to give us a really nice kick and a really quintessential kind of curtain fringe so that we get those little pieces kicking up, which I think would be a really cute like um, juxtaposition with the razor flippies and then a really harsh line here. Cool. I think that would be neat. So I'm going to be using this as my guide and establishing my length for this fringe in this section here. And then I'll be connecting those two. So taking my razor, now we want this to kind of kick out, right? So I don't want to come in flat because all of this weight is going to hang over and it's going to make it really heavy. I want to layer this in a little bit. So I'm going to take a smaller section. Let me drop her down. I don't know if that <laughs> so coming into this center section, I want this to kind of swing at the cheekbone here. That's kind of my target. I think that would be really nice in there. So looking at where this is hitting, right there. So probably like top of the lip is what I'm looking at for that center section. I'm going to pull this straight out of the head here. Okay, I'm going to get a gr good grip on the hair and pull this out. Now I'm going to check my length, which is there. But then I'm going to also be checking for the bend of the hair, where this wants to start to move yeah. and where that, that texture is coming through. So knowing that my length reposition, I want a tight tension in my fingers with the razor here so that I can hold on to the hair. Check again. That seems good. Okay. Now checking where that bend is. So knowing that this is the end of my stroke and this is the beginning, that's where I'm going to be working with as we go in here. Ooh. So what that did is I started on the top, which creates a layer. Following that down. Brilliant. Now I'm going to be doing that with this little piece here, same sort of idea, but now I have a guide. Now I don't have to measure as much because I can see my guide from underneath. Still really, really tight tension with my fingers here so that I can hold on to the hair, which is different. With the scissors, you'd cut and then you'd still have this. Once I cut, I'm holding on to the stuff that I've already cut off. And that falls away. Slightly over directing these two little corner pieces into that center section so that means we're shorter in the middle longer to the side so it's curtaining through that front bit yeah just like that cool so now we need to marry in these transition pieces right if I were to come in and over direct this all the way over that would just continue that shape into the bottom there's no pivoting going on. It's just one section next to the other right now, guys. Is it stationary? Yeah. You're bringing everything to the middle? Yeah. Yeah. yeah just in that tiny, I mean, that's like a, right, like a one inch section, yeah. about as wide as a comb. And that's pretty much your guide for it. That's the yeah. stuff that's just sitting literally right on the forehead, yeah. which is usually pretty minimal. Yeah. Um, so now I want to create this space for this flip to kind of sit into. If I was to just kind of blend this down in here, you can see how much that is going to just block off the cheekbone and not really give a place for this fringe to sit, right? Because this will all kind of comb in there. Yeah, it, it starts to look super old school, doesn't it? Yeah, it just blocks the face off, yeah. right? Where we really want to open up this face, which is the reason for a curtain fringe is to open up the face and to really accentuate this cheekbone. So knowing that we wanted this to hit like right on top of the cheekbone, we're going to use that, you know, our face as the guide here. So remember, we're going short, long, short, long. I love you just said you're going to use the face as the guide. Use what's in exactly. front of you, right? 
So we know that we want that to sit on that cheekbone here. I'm gonna bring this down to a low elevation on this one because I want to really make sure I'm gonna hit that right on the head. So here's the bend, and then here's the point of the, the fringe right here. Yeah. So we know that our, our stroke is gonna continue into that spot, and then we go. So you've literally just made a peak. I made a peak right there. Yeah, and that's what's gonna be there. That's what's gonna flip that out because yeah. short hair pushes long hair. Both ways, so it's Both creating ways. that corner. So it just creates that corner right there. Yeah. So the same spot here, bring this down. Now I'm seeing right here that my density is really thick and with the razor, we wanna have a little bit more just like soft blending within that area. So I'm just gonna go in and take out some of that. So this is you just chunkiness. removing weight. Mm -hmm. Just a weight removal, like you would do like slide cutting when the hair was dry or deep mm -hmm. point cutting afterwards. You're doing it now. I'm doing it now. Hi, Mel. Checking that bend. Coming right into it. So then now when we blend this all together. So good. See, I, that, one of, that thing for me is probably the best thing I've got from you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot from you, the razoring, but. I find that just so adaptable to working with scissors too, just to make that little corner in that area. How, how I mean, like profile wise, you still have a fringe, yeah. you know, that really opens up the cheekbone. Let me show you. On yeah, this I side. mean, if you blow dry this straight and iron it, then it's not going to look so pretty, is it? But that's not the intention here. Right. The intention is to wear it off the face. So look on this side, I'm just going to blend this down like we would and we can see so that's just taking it all the way through just like the shag would be in a sense the classic version exactly right? that layering down into that length yeah. right we still had our stuff that was off the face pinned away but even just this transitional piece by leaving that open how much of a difference and how difference, much guys. heavier that corner is than in comparison to that corner yeah fine this much. is so much more flattering to the face shape well what do we see all the time when it's not done right we see stylists or educators and then we see clients just thumbing it all the time Constantly. to place it yeah whereas it's naturally placed here so your client doesn't have to just thumb all day long this will just sit in that spot kind of tucked away so that we can you know easy so then when clients come in to get like i offer usually like a bang trim in between like full appointments it's not just this stuff right here. It's this stuff, it's the transitional piece, it's what's off the face, it's what's really blocking off the face, looking at what we need to remove. I guess kind of similar to like old school, like C carving. Yeah, it is, it's just the C shape in a way, isn't it? Yeah, just taking that little corner out so that it opens up the face. But I think most importantly, before going in and doing something like this is really analyzing the hair where it lives in its natural state so that you can be in control while this you know natural texture is coming through so again checking the cheekbone here checking where that bend is so we know this is starting higher than it was on the other side this is also much more dense here than it was on the other side so we're going to have to start just a little bit higher with their stroke to be able to get that to curl backwards cool Knowledge bomb. Uh, we have a question. What kind of razor do you use? This is the um, the feather plie yeah. from, um, they got them on Hairbrain. Yeah. Yeah, and then I just have a subscription to um, on Amazon for my blades. I think I've got like five boxes now. Her Instagram is Kelly with an E does hair. So again, removing that density, pulling this down low elevation checking where that bend is. We can see that when I take out some of this weight here, how much more of that kickback and retraction we're getting, how this hair is wanting to bevel around. And I just wanna work with where, where it wants to do that. Pin, please. I don't know how to do that, sorry. <laughs> There's no pinning from me. And you're not entering the conversation or the live, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. The scissors I used are from Hairbrained. I wrote it down in the in the comments here. They're the uh, HB Pro AG55s. See now that just changed the whole thing. 
That's right. It changes the whole look of the haircut. So technically, look, it just falls. Well, right I've got a question here. Would you recommend this technique for textured hair? That's a kind of an open-ended question. When you say textured hair, what do you mean? Because texture can be straight, it can be wavy, it can be curly. I think um, what you're meaning is, can you do this on curly hair? I mean, it really, it's all about control. Now, it's, with the scissors, like I said, when you're coming in to cut, you pull that tight tension and you can cut here. And what you've already cut is still in your fingers, right? Like you can see where you're cutting. With the razor, I cut past my fingers and then what I've already cut gets released. Yeah. So knowing that and approaching it in a sense that you can control the fabric that you're working with, if it's really, really curly hair and you're pulling this super tight and then you cut, boing, that'll retract and you kind of lose your place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably never going to look like this if it's curly, guys. It's not gonna look like a, this kind of shape. It's a whole other kind of ball game when you come to working with that particular texture. And this tool, you know, yeah. like this, can, this technique can be done with the scissors. It's just yeah. really based upon what you enjoy using. I love working with the razor. I love the texture it gives. But you, we could have done the same thing with the scissor and gone in and sli you know, slide cut or done yeah. you know, the layering like you, like you taught here. And then use the points of the and scissors to do it. And then use the points it. to cut it in yeah. because really the shape is there. It's just staggered, right? That's the difference between the two tools, guys. The scissor gives you the ability to keep it blunt and give you the softness. The razor gives you softness. Right, immediately. Yeah. So, and it's a softness you probably can't get with the scissor because of the, the strength of that blade. Well, and I, I just enjoy the finish of it. Now I can, I, I'm not as talented as DJ with the scissors and the precision, but I can do that. That's what I originally trained on before I jumped into the razor. I just enjoy this tool much more. So that's my um, fringe good. tutorial. Awesome. As you can see, this is just sitting so nicely all the way around as hairdressers. The profile is beautiful. We have here, profile here, we've opened up that cheekbone and that's just sitting really nicely. You've essentially given her the bottleneck bob in a way. Yeah. It's just taking a layered bob, a lob, and just popping a fringe on it. 